Hey, quilting fans, it is block of the month time. I am super excited you are here. That's right, this is block one. We are starting another series for the entire year, 2021. Happy New Year, everybody. The patch party was designed by my friend Lila Gardunia, and we are going to have a blast. One block a month, all of us together. Let's get started. That is right, it is so exciting to be kicking off the new year with all of you. I am blessed that you are here. This is going to be a blast. And like I said, we are kicking off another block of the month project. This was done by another fantastic pattern partner, Lila Gardunia. Drop. Say that one more time, rewind. Say it so they can hear it in the back. Lila Gardunia, and she has created an awesome pattern that is sold through your favorite quilt shops, whether they're online or in person. And she also is having kits made available for all of you. So I'm gonna walk you through, we are. We're gonna do one block a month at that pace so that all of you can keep up. Now the quilt itself, as you can see, is awesome. It actually features two blocks from each month, which makes things super exciting. Block 11 is this awesome center, so you are gonna need to save all of your scraps while we we are working so that we have the parts and pieces we need for that. Of course, the fabrics are from Michael Miller. The cotton couture is our solid, and the fairy frost is our print texture. The solid white cotton couture is our ground, and we are going to have an absolute blast. Now, Block Month has all the information you need for your background uh, fabric, and then the rest of the months will supply the information as you go. And please do remember, this is a paid-for pattern. We are supporting our local quilt shops, our online retailers, and of course, Lila and her career as she builds these beautiful quilts. So I will walk you through the step-by-steps, but I will leave out the numbers to protect the innocent, and we all have a blast that way. Now, this block is super simple. I don't know about the rest. I've only made one. We're on month number one. So following your instructions below, we are going to go ahead and get started. Now, we're gonna be using some strips in the first phase. We're gonna be basically sewing, sewing together strips so that then we can build these wonderful patchwork blocks you can see that have a couple of different color combinations we're using, both the solid and the fairy frost. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and follow the instructions like I said. And we're gonna start with a strip that is the same width as a strip of our fairy frost. This is the opal color fairy frost and we are using the shell color cotton couture. Now I'm just gonna lay these right sides together. I'm gonna put a quarter inch seam and what's really important today is that whatever we're doing with our seam allowance, primarily a quarter inch because we are gonna have some points, we're gonna do the same seam allowance for all of our steps. So we're just gonna go ahead and sew our matching strip sets together. The one thing that has helped my quilting improve more than anything else, hands down, is this little foot right here. It's a quarter inch foot and it has a little guide along the edge. That little guide keeps my fabric from ever scooting over so it's impossible for me to have seams wider than a quarter of an inch. It has been a lifesaver. Like overnight, my seams started matching. My points didn't get cut off. It was like I became an expert seamstress overnight because of this. So if you don't have one, you might wanna consider picking one up. Worth every penny. And you'll be matching two longer strips of the fairy frost with the white background cotton couture and one strip of the shell colored cotton couture with the white cotton couture for a series of three total strips and as you're finishing it out your strips we're just going to head on over to the iron and once we get to that iron we're going to press to the darker fabric always. And so therefore I'm gonna hold up that fairy frost like this in the air. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run my iron up along setting the thread, setting the seam at first, and then allowing the iron to push over the fold like you see up and back. And 
And now we're gonna need to go ahead and take these and sub cut them down. So what I like to do when I'm doing that is I start by making a really nice little quick trim on one edge just to clean it up. And then I'm gonna cut these strips following the number on the instructions there to go ahead and make it so that I can put them back together later on and form myself some squares. We're gonna cut down all of our strips that are the fairy frost and background combo and our cotton couture and background combo. I better pay attention to what I'm doing, however, because I don't have extras. Now, we're also gonna need uh, to use some of the squares that I had already pre-done that had our cotton couture solid, like I said. So now what I wanna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna go ahead and lay one of these with that cotton couture solid up in this upper right hand corner as I'm looking at it. And then on the opposite side, so kind of checkerboard style, we're gonna do that layout. And then of course we'll do the same here and here for our fairy frost. So we are going to go ahead and then just fold this over. We're gonna sew up two matching combos like this for each of the two blocks, so a total of four. Everything you're seeing me do right now, remember we're gonna double. And you most certainly can chain PCs as well. Just make sure you're paying attention and following the orientation in the instructions. Because with this one, we have a little bit of a color switch, which is really fun at the end. You will be making three of these combinations of Fairy Frost, Fairy Frost checkerboard like you see there. And again, you can chain these onto the rest. And now I have enough units made for one block. Let's go ahead and press these also over to the dark side. If you can figure out which direction that is, I don't think that actually makes any sense. <laughs> because it's a checkerboard. There we go. Two of those. And three of the Fairy Frost combinations, as I believe I stated before. And these units are complete. Super simple. Super easy. And I really like the way the patterns are and the instructions are written out and very easy to follow. Okay, so I'm just gonna set these little, those are called four patches. We're gonna set those aside for a little bit later. Now we're gonna build what we call half square triangles, just like that, okay? So what we're about to do will give us two uh, each of these half square triangles that we need. You need four per block, a total of eight. So we're gonna go ahead and finish out this one. And you can also hopefully see, I've already used one of my little fine tip Sharpie markers and a straight edge, like my little ruler here, laid it corner to corner, and then I drew on a straight line. Now, if you have never made half square triangles before, please note, there's two different ways of doing this. Today, we're gonna use the drawn line as a guide, not where we put our needle and thread. We're going to put that on the edge of the foot so we actually yield one and two half square triangles out of this set of squares. Your fabric should be right sides together. If you're using solids, that will be easier today. Okay, now again, I'm laying my presser foot and I actually like to do it just on the inside of that edge. So basically a quarter inch away from that drawn line now. And I come down and I actually just rotate my block around to the opposite side, lowering my presser foot on the other side of that line, still using that as a quarter inch seam guide, and just come right on down to the end here. Once that's done, you probably should, but it's not necessary, but use a ruler, mostly for safety here, because I am going to now press these to the dark side, and that's done easily by holding the dark fabric always in the finger, and then laying the iron on the light fabric and that starts you in a good flow. And then the rest of this, you wanna use 
one of the diagonal lines, the 45 degree diagonal line on a ruler to go ahead and lay along the seam you just created first. And by doing that, we are doing what's called squaring up. So I'm gonna shave the first cut. The first cut's just a really light little shave. I rotate 180 degrees. And at that point, not only am I following this line, but I'm also looking for my corner for whatever size square I need to create. And I'm gonna do that. And I also like to roll through so I'm not starting on my corner there. When you start on the corner, a lot of times of your ruler, a lot of times that'll go ahead and nibble away at the ruler and dull your blade. So I'll show you that again really fast. We're just gonna use our 45 degree mark to square up. And I'm making sure that I'm past the lines I need early on. Shave, shave, rotate. Now we're going for accuracy. So I'm looking at my hypotenuse and my edges. And we are clean and square and we are ready to get ourselves organized to build this block out together. I told you it would be easy, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly stack my like fabric blocks, my four patches with the two opposite colors, the three four patches with the same colors, and now the four blocks I already had. And we're gonna start right in the middle with one of these, and I better just refer to my destructions, <laughs> making sure I have it right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna follow the fairy frost, follow the fairy frost trail, follow the fairy frost trail. Did I just do that on film? Oh. <laughs> Anyways, now, if you see what I'm doing, I'm building what will now be a nine patch block, one, two, three, across three, and I'm following the fairy frost trail across there that way. And now the easier uh, thing for me to see is I go ahead and I'm gonna lay in my coral color, um, excuse me, my shell color fairy frost. So they're gonna be touching insides, rotating here, so touching, touching, like I said colors touching like I said here and then as the last four patches go on the ones that have that cotton couture the cotton couture goes to the exterior out there like that now the rest of this becomes super simple I just divide it again into thirds and I'm going to go ahead and start sewing and I like to sew in the middle first I'm going to just flop over one side heading on over to the machine for another quarter inch seam allowance Now, my trick whenever I'm building blocks like this is I'm not gonna go to the iron yet. I don't need to. The block's large enough I can fit the iron in in the middle in a second. But as I lay this down, I'm really making sure that everything lines up and I'm sewing the correct seams together for the center. And the reason I start in the center, well, I'll tell you after I finish the seam. is because I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna press these first ones um, away from the center. So I'm gonna start my iron on the center block. I'm gonna push that seam to the outside edge and this one to the outside edge so that when we build our next two rows, I will press them the opposite direction so that these seams can also nest. So I'm just gonna take a minute and continually, slowly, methodically sewing a seam, checking a seam and then ironing when I have both sides connected. And now, because these seams are facing that direction, I wanna take these seams and face them in, so this makes it a lot easier. So that's why I do the center as the more challenging pressing, and then this one, from the outside block to the inside, rotate it from the outside block to the inside. Make sure as you drop them back onto your design table or wall that your cotton couture did end up back here on the outside corner. And we're going to finish out this row here. And again, pressing from the outside to the center and the outside to the center. A 
confirming everything is correct. Now I'm going to go ahead and just begin stitching this, but I'm really, really paying attention to the way that these seams now nest together. If I really secure those, that's going to make sure that all of my little blocks line up so nicely. Let me hit this with the iron so I can show off the beauty in this fantastic block here. Now, as I was saying earlier, for block number one and many of the other blocks, you're going to make two to put this beautiful quilt together. And you can kind of see that the colors are running kind of on diagonal opposites. So this is going to be fantastic. So everything I did here today was following the instructions. So one of the questions I early on had, and I'll answer it for all of you before you get started, is the instructions are giving you the information for building two blocks in all of the cutting. So you don't have to double it like a cookie recipe. Lila's done all the work for you and thank you for that. This is going to be an incredible party. This is going to be an incredible patchwork. The patch party by Lila Gardunia is beautiful. We are super excited. She chose the Cotton Couture and the Fairy Frost from Michael Miller Fabrics. These are basic, so you should be able to find them in all of your local fantastic quilt shops out there, your online retailers. Like I said, these patterns are available for purchase, so you can grab one of those to support. There are also kits being built, so you can grab one of those to support. We will see you once a month. I'm going to shoot for the first week of every month to put out the newest block. We'll even do them in sequential order. We don't want to confuse anybody. And I'll also have a bunch of other fantastic videos coming your way in 2021 right here at Making It Fun. Hey, that rhymed a lot better than that fairy frost thing I was doing earlier. <laughs> Just use any of that. What? Are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.